Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to pick up where we left off at the end of part one to discuss how to design and customize our one gauge LCD screens. Now if you haven't watched part one, uh, that is required. I would highly recommend it because it runs through a lot of the basics of how to use these screens um, and the software and how to make basic edits and adjustments. Um, this is going to be a more advanced one. Most people are not going to need to do a whole lot with this video. So if the last video showed you everything that you need to know, um, I wouldn't even recommend watching this one. But if you're looking to go a little bit deeper and do a little bit more advanced designing and editing with these screens and the software, then I would recommend going ahead and watching this video. So um, we're going to pick up, like I said, right where we left off. So in the last video, we created um, a new reading on our screen. We deleted some of the old readings that were here that we weren't using and we added a reading. We added this text. We talked about how to add and change the fonts for text. So again, just a refresher, if you click on the box, uh, if you click on any element or object, it uh, will show all the, all the basic uh, parameters, the characteristics of that object over here. You've got a font which corresponds to your font ID over here on the left. The pictures work the same way. If you create a picture, if you scroll down here a little bit and create a picture, let's say I want this image right here, 2869. Okay, it's gonna give me that image right there. Now notice this isn't going to do anything until some programming is added to the one gauge. So if you're adding images and things like this, um, you're going to need to communicate with us. Let us know what you're doing so that we can send you code updates that will allow some of these images to work. Okay. Some of the things that we'll have to know are the image number, the pick number right here, and then the object name um, based on the image that you've created. So those are just some things to be thinking about as you're manipulating some of these things. All right, um, a few things to think about. Um, if you're going to create your own totally custom screen, what I would recommend doing is just going up here to the page and clicking Add, and it's going to add a blank page down here at the bottom. The first thing we need to think about, of course, is what the background is going to look like. Now, if you just want like a solid color black ground, uh, background, you can do that right here. Just like any of the other objects, you can change the solid color to whatever you want. Most people though, uh, what makes the most sense, what's usually easiest to set up is to, to draw a background image in another piece of software. That could be Photoshop, it could be Illustrator, I use Inkscape. Um, there's a variety of image editors. You could use MS Paint, it really doesn't matter. You just want to create a background image and the image needs to match the dimensions of your screen. So the seven inch screens that we sell are 800 by 480 pixels. And our 10 inch screens are um, 1024 by 600 pixels. And then the five inch screens are actually the same as the seven inch 800 by 480. So you design an image, let's say, for example, I designed this image right here, number 2880 as the background for one of my screens up above. So um, let's say you've designed a similar gauge, you want this to be your background. So over here, instead of solid color, I'm gonna change this to image. And I'm going to get the number of my picture, 2880, and type it in right there. Okay, now the background is that image file. Your background should be unchanging. Nothing about this is ever gonna change in the live view when I actually use my gauges in my vehicle. So your background should have everything but any kind of changing text, any needles. You don't want any of those things in there because those are going to be, you know, permanently shown as the background image of your file. Okay. So obviously the next things that we need to do, we need to start adding some text and things. Um, you can you can view the previous video that will show you how to add text. So if we want to add, for example. Right here, we want our coolant temp reading. We add this, we have to change our object name to CTN. Again, all of, the, all of these object names are listed up here in the designer page. Okay, so CTN right here. Let's go back down to our, all right.
white and then we just so we change that to CTN we want to get rid of this solid color and change it to transparency and then of course we need to change to some version of some color of text that's that you can actually see okay you can change our font let's go with we can just go with the simple euro style 24 is a slightly smaller font than the one I have right there okay that's gonna give you a really tiny reading and maybe go up one there we go that's a little bit better and then I can type in the value here 999 just to check and make sure that it's big enough okay so there's our coolant temperature reading that's gonna give us a readout of coolant temp um, so you can do that with all of your gauges that you are going to be adding um, for the next screen or for the next thing that you want to do if you want to add an actual gauge this is one of the more complex portions um, of the setup so I've created an example on your designer page so let's just copy this guy as our coolant temperature gauge bring it copy that and paste it here okay let's make the the primary color white so that we can see the needle and then the PCO, PCO2 is the um, the circle right here, kind of your, uh, I don't know what it's called, but the, the base of the needle. You can change that to whatever you want as well. Okay, so uh, by default, I've set up most gauges on my screens to be 180, sorry, 240 degree sweeps. So that means the gauge sweeps 240 degrees as it, uh, as the kind of the full range of the gauge. Um, now, obviously, the issue here, this is a 240 degree sweep gauge, but the value zero doesn't correspond to the beginning of the gauge. So what we do is we change our format, and that, so a zero format puts a zero reading on this gauge as right here. And we're going to have to just kind of play around until we get it to this reading there. So I'm going to guess something like 200, not quite far enough. So if I go to 220, I'm pretty close. Yeah, there we go. So 225 sets this position of the needle as zero. And then you can test that, you know, if we do 120, that'll be halfway. And then 240 should be the full sweep of the needle. Okay. Okay. Um, now, once you do these types of things, you're going to want to be communicating with us at OneGage, telling us, hey, I'm creating a custom screen, and there's some things that we're going to need to provide you. For example, when the screen starts up, there's some code that has to run to tell the computer which screen it's on, and we'll provide those types of things to you. Um, but that, that, that gives you an idea of how to create a basic needle. Now, you can change the way this needle looks by playing around with a lot of these things. Um, the up changes the gauge head length, so you can set it at 50, that makes a shorter head, you can change it to 100, 150, you know. At the default value is 32767, that's going to make it basically as big as the gauge itself. So it'll the needle will go to the very edge of this box right here. If you need to make it bigger, you just drag the box and make it bigger, right? So for this this one we would need to make it bigger so that it matches up. We'd also need to change the format so that it starts at zero here. Okay, I'm going to undo those. Go back. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, if you want to change colors, we talked about that. Left, move this off center. Um, I'll show you why that might be helpful in a second. This height shows the center diameter of this little circle. If you set it at zero, it gets rid of it. Um, this one is your gauge head max, so set it to 10, it makes the head much thicker. Zero would make it pencil thin. Okay, and then this is the gauge body, so that widest part right here, if we change it to two, you'll see it makes it skinnier. And then this is the gauge foot, so the portion that would have been behind the circle, if we bring that circle back, you can see it's behind that portion. You can get rid of it altogether. Um, there's a way to do that. Here we go, gauge foot length. That would get rid of it. You can also make it extra long if you wanted to do that. Okay, so let's say you want to just create like a little indicator, kind of like what I've done up here on this screen. These are just small indicators. There's no red circle 
and it's you know it's not exactly centered on the gauge um, I'll show you what I mean let's go back to our new page okay so we can get rid of the center let's make the end of it three and this part of it five and then let's make this a little smaller it looks kind of silly and then what we could do is make the length shorter by changing this gauge head length let's make it 50 okay now the issue is of course this gauge is going to be spinning around and it's not it's not very helpful because you really can't tell where exactly it's pointing as it you know spins so what you can do is change the left reading which will move it out towards the edge so let's try 80 that's that's kinda close the issue is I did a little too far because if I did let's do 45 see it's a little too far it's a little too close to the edge here so let's change left to 60 and that brings it out a little bit okay so that that actually works pretty well I can test it with different values and make sure it spins around the gauge correctly as I change the values here so that looks pretty good so that worked well of course you can change the color and that kind of matches the gauge that I did in the screen example above okay so that's a pretty typical um, standard gauge setup now what you can do if you really want to get fancy is create gauge needle images the issue with this is that every frame every degree rotation of the needle has to be uploaded so if you're looking to create a custom needle let's get rid of this one add a picture and we're gonna name this one CTG as our coolant temp gauge and we'll set the image as 1094 so that's the image here and basically what one gauge is gonna do if you get this dialog just hit no as you drag things around what one gauge is gonna do is tell the screen which image to show based on the reading that you get so let's find this isn't a good example because it's not really calibrated to the same but 893 so this would you know one gauge would say okay coolant temperature is reading 90 degrees we want this to show you know at 90 and so it would tell the screen which image to display um, obviously this starts getting pretty complicated because there's a lot of things to take into account you have to export every image so really to keep things simple I typically recommend um, just using the native gauge option that's here up in the top left and that's what we did earlier is what we were playing with so um, okay so hopefully that takes you through some of the basics you will need to add buttons down here so if you want to be able to navigate to and from the screen you're gonna to have to add buttons um, and honestly it's probably easiest if I walk you through how to do that by email if you can um, email me um, at info at the one gauge .com and we can help you with some of these questions uh, but this will at least get you started uh, we can do all this work ourselves of course um, but it is time consuming as you can imagine so we do charge for the labor that's involved with custom, creating custom screen designs um, but just let us know we're happy to give you a quote and talk you through how some of these things work give you some instructions and some help and, and make it happen for you so thanks for watching um, again if you have questions info at the one have a good one